In this mini series, I'm going to show you how to create a tycoon on Roblox in 2024. So the first thing you want to do is click on the base plate over here. Uh, we're just going to load up the simplest template that you can get for a Roblox game, which is this base plate. So I'm just going to close down these panels. The only panels that you want to have open are the Explorer and the Properties window, which you can find up here in the top left corner. So just make sure that Explorer and Properties are selected and you'll be good to go. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to assign a plot to a player. Um, so I'm going to insert a part by clicking on this part button in the Home tab. And then I'm just going to scale it so that it is the size of a plot, which is typically around 100 studs. So in the Properties panel, I'm going to set this to 100 by 1 by 100. Okay, so here is our plot, and I'm just going to drag it away from one of the spawn points. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Properties panel, and I'm just going to name this Plot. And I'm going to make sure that the anchored box is checked so that it doesn't move around and uh, can collide will make sure that is also checked so that the player can collide with it okay so we've created a plot uh, now let's just create a few more um, because we obviously want multiple players in the game so i'm just going to press ctrl and d to duplicate them anytime i say uh, ctrl uh, just use command if you're on a mac okay so i've just duplicated these and we now have eight plots so you can now go to the Explorer panel and just select all of your plots here, right click and choose group as a folder. And then we're going to name this folder. Uh, I'm just going to call it plots. OK, so we've got all of our plots organized in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write some code um, which will when when a player joins the game, it will choose one of these plots that's available and it will mark it as being occupied. OK, so to do this, let's go into the server script service and let's select script. And then I'm just going to call this script plot handler. OK, just so we know what it does. And then in our script, we are going to just create a variable which will reference this plots um, folder. So we can say local plots equals game dot workspace dot plots okay because the plots folder is in the workspace it's good to just have a reference to this because we're going to be using it quite quite a lot um, so we've just got it so we can easily say plots instead of game dot workspace dot plots all of the time uh, now we need some code for when a player joins the game okay so this is just a comment i'm just going to leave a couple of these in the script so you know uh, what each part of the code does it's like a note to self but we're going to say game dot players dot player added colon connect function and then we have a pair of brackets or parentheses we've got our closing end tag here and we are going to have an argument which is going to be the player who joins so anything we do to this player argument here will be done to a new player who joins so what we want to do is we want to get a plot for them and there's going to be a plot available in our folder so we want to find the first plot that isn't taken. And so what we're going to do is when we give a player a plot, we're going to set an attribute of the specific plot. So say we chose this plot for our player. OK, we need to mark it as being taken so that the next player can't take it. And to do this, we will set an attribute. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to set an attribute in this code, which is going to be called taken. So what we can do is we can just go back to our code here and we can say for uh, underscore comma plot in plots colon get children do. And this is going to loop through every single plot in that folder. And we want to firstly make sure it's not taken. So we can say if uh, if um, plot colon get attribute taken. OK then continue end and that is just going to skip over this specific plot it's just going to go straight to the next one because we've said this one don't even bother because it's taken okay and so if any code here is running then it means the plot is not taken so we want to we want to take it ourselves and so what we're going to do is we're going to say plot colon set attribute taken 
and we're going to set it to true. So we're now marking this plot as being taken. So up here, we're checking to see if it's already taken. If it is, we're just going to continue. It's going to move on to the next one. If it isn't taken, not taken, then it's just going to set it as being taken. And we found our plot. So uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set another attribute of this plot. And I want to call it the owner, right? Because we want to store the player who now owns this plot. So we're going to say player.userID. We're just setting a value inside this plot, inside its attribute uh, attributes uh, table, just so we now know that, yes, this plot is taken, and yes, we know who owns this plot. So the next thing is when a player leaves the game, right? We need to mark their plot as available again. So we're just going to say game.players.player uh, removing this time colon connect function player so we know which player left and same thing really we're going to loop through that plots folder just like this and we want to check to see if the plot that we're looping through is owned by this specific player and if so we can say if plot get attribute owner um, in fact we'll say yeah, so if plot get attribute owner, if not get, sorry, so if not plot get attribute owner, then continue end. That means if it doesn't exist, because the plot might not have an owner. So if the code down here is running, if it gets to this stage, then the plot is owned by a player. Now we have to check that it's the specific player that's leaving the game to find their plot. So if uh, plot get attribute owner is not equal to the player dot user ID. Then again, we want to continue because it's not the specific player we want. But if the code, so I'm just going to scroll down for you as well because I know it's just coming off the screen. And so if it gets to this point, we know that we have found the correct plot. So we're going to say plot set attribute taken. And we're going to set that to um, false. You could set it to false or you could set it to nil. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to say plot set attribute attribute owner. Uh, let's just set them both to nil. Yeah, because I think if we set it to nil, it will remove the attribute. So we have now written the code that is going to... I'm just going to zoom out for you as well. So we've now written the code which is going to um, handle the giving and removing of a uh, plot when, when player joins the game. And we can just test this by saying print uh, plot has been given to dot dot player dot name dot dot explanation mark if you wanted to. And we can do the same down here. Plot has been removed uh, from players dot name. And I think that should be good to go. Um, we can give it a test. So we just go to the um, testing window up here in the top left corner, click on test, click on play, and then we'll see what happens. Now we'll go to the output. Okay, so it says uh, plot has been given to Alvin underscore blocks. However, it has printed that out eight times. So what's happened here is it's looped through every single plot in the folder and it's given every single one to me. Uh, we only wanted it to give one. And that is because we didn't kill the loop. So we have a, let me just zoom out. So we have two loops here, right? And it's looping through every single plot. So all of this code inside the loop will be done to every plot unless it is taken. Um, but once we found our plot, and we've given it to our specific player that joined, we're just going to say break, okay? And that will that will kill the loop. It will say, right, we've done everything we need. You can just stop this now. You can stop looping through any other plots. And we'll do the same thing down here. So we'll just put a break. And we'll click on play again. And this time, you should only see that it has printed out once. Yeah, it's only printed out once this time. Uh, and if we go to our explorer, and we have a look in the plots. I'm just going to move the properties window alongside here. Um, but as we just look at the attributes, we can see the first plot has been given to us. So the owner 
uh, has my user ID, which is 14943069, and the taken uh, value is true. And if we look at the other plots, they don't have those attributes. I just accidentally dragged one out there. But yeah, they don't have those attributes. Only one of them does. So we have now been given a specific plot, which is awesome. Um, and the next uh, thing that we're going to need to do is we are going to need to start working on things like setting up buttons and having things to buy. So you can watch that by clicking on the thumbnail on the screen now. And I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.